Anyhow, um, just to let you know, I'm going to start doing probably a couple of these a week uh, to try to discuss some issues that come up. Um, mostly because it's a way that I can reach folks um, as we start this campaign and because I'm broke and this is free. <laughs> um, so go ahead and put this at the top. If you go to fullerforgeorgia.com, there's a donate button there now. If you support this, you can really use it. Um, but I want to talk about quickly just the four main platform issues we want to talk about during this campaign. Uh, the first one is rural health care. Um, we've got a crisis in the state. We have literal hospitals closing in rural areas. Um, and a big part of that is because we do not, we did not expand the ACA to accept $8 million a year, uh, $8 million a day that the federal government would allow us to expand Medicaid um, to people. And if you say, Pete, I got insurance. Why is that a problem for me? Problem is the rest of us have to pay that. In a lot of rural areas, there is not enough people to make up the difference between people that still need care, go get care, and then can't pay. Uh, it makes our premiums more expensive and it makes care in the state worse. Uh, and as we're looking at a possible issues with this coronavirus thing, um, there are massive costs that people are gonna be looking at um, between testing and care, and it's going to prevent a lot of people from getting the care they need, um, which is probably going to help this situation spread instead of it being contained. That's a worry. Um, and if elected to the state legislature, I'm going to push for those provisions to be done. Um, and that's an issue. Um, so, yeah, give me your thoughts on that. Um, second part is rural broadband. Um, together with some friends here, uh, they had actually started it before I got involved, uh, because when we moved from Winder, in Winder we had a lot of competition in the city, um, and our internet was pretty good. We moved into Jefferson in 2011, and we could barely get online at different times of night. Um, and between people that I've, some of my best friends now are people that I met in this group, the Jefferson Jackson Windstream group, um. And myself is having a technical background. We were able to help a lot of people with different situations they had in their homes. But there was also state and federal level issues that we found that Windstream was not, had accepted a lot of federal money with promise of expanding service in rural areas, but didn't actually do it. Uh, we were able to work um, with the city with our, actually worked with Doug Collins' office during this time. And we were able to force Windstream to dump, dump $30 million into Jefferson. Um, it didn't fix broadband in this area at all, but it helped a lot um, in different parts of the area. Uh, now at the state level, there are there were some bills last year to try to address this, but what you see a lot of times is the people working on these bills don't are not technically savvy. Um, and what that ends up meaning is they get influenced by lobbyists, uh, they don't understand definitions, and they think that they're doing something good, but it's really not enough or less than enough. Um, I believe like last year they had, in the bill that they had passed, they were trying to define broadband as something much slower than what broadband actually is for most people. Um, and saying that was okay. Um, things like that. I feel with the technical background I have, um, I've been a system administrator for too long now, like uh, 15 so years at least. Um, I understand technology and I hope I can help with that. Um, let's talk about firearms as well. Um, I support the Second Amendment. Um, I've moderated a lot over the years here with this um, because there are situations and if you are a law-abiding citizen that's not a threat to anyone else, um, that's a right for you to have in this country. Um, what I'm seeing though is a lot of hype and extremism for everybody should be able to have whatever they want, anytime. And that's just not feasible a lot of times. There are people that are a threat to themselves and others. Um, we've people that are, have bipolar issues, um, that could be a threat to themselves. My wife works in the elder care. She's dealing with a lot of times people that 
have lost their faculties and sometimes. Um, and if you've ever dealt with an elderly person that has doesn't want to give up driving, it's the same situation. Um, and there are documented cases of elderly people that are having some early onset dementia that have hurt caregivers and loved ones, not knowing what they were doing. Um, law enforcement believes this is the case. Um, I've had those discussions with different um, law enforcement officials. There are people in our society that are a threat to themselves and others, and we need firm laws. Um, we need good process for this, but yeah, uh, we need those opportunities to, to do that. Um, and when it comes to um, other other issues around guns, I think I support safe, safe storage, common sense, responsible ownership. Um, whether or not that has to be something that's by law, or do we just promote a massive PR campaign that people lock their weapons up when they're not in use? Um, we have a lot of people with guns now that did not come up with the same mindset of how to handle them safely. Um, and that's just like Mad did in the 80s that changed drunk driving from something that was just common and it happened to something that was people get upset with you when they hear you may have driven drunk now. Um, if people hear that you are got a weapon that you're just storing in a sock drawer and not out of the harm's way from a toddler that may be looking for things or, um, or just leaving it in your car unlocked and get it stolen. Um, securing your weapons are, is a basic tenet of responsible ownership. That's all I want to promote there. Um, the final piece of this is promoting an inclusive Jackson County. Um, and this goes directly to the heart of why I couldn't let this race go unopposed again. Um, I'm not going to run a negative campaign here. I will as implore you to do your research on the current representative of the seat, Mr. Tommy Benton. Um, he's been quiet over the last few years, but he has made has a history of making some extremely offensive statements uh, and supporting some extremely offensive groups. Groups like the Klan. Um, please go to Google, type his name in. The AJC and other outlets have covered him extensively. Um, and I don't think that anyone, he's not making anyone proud in this county by pushing those beliefs. And I want to be someone that doesn't cause any, any shame to come to the county, um, if elected. Um, cause I want to work on solutions. I don't want to go up there and play with the monuments committee and do things that are really irrelevant in a lot of ways when it comes to the actual problems we have in the state and the solutions that we need to, to do. Um, so yeah, that's my four big platform areas. Um, got a lot of thoughts on other things. We'll be talking more about that, but, um, yeah, we're going to try to go with this. Um, but we need money. Um, Mr. Benton has been a chairman for a while. Um, he's got a lot of money in the bank and we're up to about 200 bucks. Um, which doesn't even pay for the qualifying fees that were paid the other day. So please, um, I'm not asking for a ton of money. Um, anything you can afford reasonably, I need it in order to get message out. Um, Pete for Georgia, Fuller for Georgia.com. I got to get the website right. Uh, there's a donate button there. Um, and I would appreciate anything you can give for this because we're going to need it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And, We'll be doing this later.